Okay, let's get started. This is CS2510, week 1, lecture 2. And as you will notice, most of the videos for this course will probably be only videos. In the sense, they won't be accompanied by lecture notes because this is a very experimental type of course. In the sense, we're going to be writing a lot of MATLAB code. But uh, once you start MATLAB, you should see these different windows, the history window, the workspace, the command window, and the current folder. And if you don't, you can go to window and enable uh, these different sub-windows, if you will. So, but anyway, the point of this course, again, is to go through MATLAB. So I'll assume that your uh, bottom line is I'll assume that you're familiar with like basic Windows operations, right? For example, right click, left click, context, uh, activating context menu using right click, etc. Now before you get started, it's always a good idea to organize your code. How? By using folders. And as a rule of thumb, uh, oops, it's not. I don't create a new folder there. Let's go into the current folder window, right click, and then choose new folder. And the rule of thumb is it's a good idea to not have spaces in the folder names and there is this notion of having the folder in your MATLAB path that is discussed in your reading. For now, I'm just going to create a new folder called, uh, I don't know, a week, let's do, let's do this. Let's create a folder on my C drive and as the rule of thumb, which I never mentioned, is that it's not a good idea to have spaces in your folder names. And the reasons for that are not complicated. Uh, just talk to me in office hours if you don't know why. It's historical more. Uh, it's, it's, uh, it's more a historical thing. Uh, but now that we have created the folder, and I created it on my C drive, you could create a folder on your D drive, on my tablet, I don't have a D drive. Whatever, just make sure there are no spaces. And under underneath this folder, let me create another folder called uh, week one, lecture two, examples and there I'll try to borrow my code here and before using any language for that matter not only a computer program you need to understand the syntax syntax are the rules okay the rules in MATLAB are pretty simple we'll go obviously we can't go through all of them but we'll go through enough of them uh, so you can write very quote-unquote productive code whatever productive means but Whatever, uh, it's not that we don't cover in lecture, but rather you should think about it as how do I expand my repertoire uh, of, uh, or my toolbox of MATLAB functions. And the easiest way to do that, I always turn on the more functionality so scrolling is enabled. I can do help, like for example, fprintf is something you will uh, run into. So my tablet, by the way, is pretty slow. So what I might end up doing is I might end up like, uh, so this is the advantage of the more functionality. You enable scrolling more there, whatever. But I might end up uh, pausing the lecture in the middle, which I can, my lecture recording, then continuing. So in real time, although my lectures, like I said in the last uh, lecture video or the video for lecture one, my lecture videos are at most, like they'll be between 20 and, 20 and 22 minutes long. But as you will see, uh, I mean, not as you will see, sorry. In real time, I actually end up sometimes taking up to like 40 minutes recording a lecture just because MATLAB is slow, but you won't see the 40 minutes. Anyway, let's look at some, uh, uh, let's start with some simple MATLAB stuff, some obvious stuff. So you can, whatever you type on the command line, like let's say I type in pi, right? So that's approximately pi. I don't know if E is there, so there is no E. Um, but let's say, so let's say uh, I was thinking about something else. I'll let my subconscious think about it. Uh, but let's say you want to, uh, I don't know, let's do something like uh, pi over 2. So whatever you type on the command line, you can basically put them in a batch file called as a script file. Let's just uh, go to file new script. And here is the MATLAB editor. And comments are given by percent. This is a comment. Uh, please comment
comment comment your code liberally so but it should be insightful of course anyway so you can do something like uh, what is pi I mean pi plus pi over 2 etc and then when I save this it'll be in make sure and get the extent and make sure it's the current folder the extension will be a dot m extension right so it'll be something like I'm mean, an example script okay so it's called example script dot m and to execute this you can just type example the name of the script file without the extension MATLAB has tab completion so if you press tab it shows you all the different possibilities and that's example script right there so notice nothing displayed and that's okay because there's another thing about MATLAB I have semicolons at the end of these statements semicolons means do not echo the output so let me take the semicolons on it again and you're getting two answers and notice that uh, MATLAB stores the result in a workspace variable called ants so but the default name is ants and you can change that obviously so let me um, expand the workspace and so here is uh, what the value is what the min is what the max is you can get the same functionality oops I enabled caps lock by typing who and your variables are ants okay but anyway what I was gonna say was you don't have to use the answer you can something you can use something like why and the only restriction that MATLAB places on variable names is that uh, the first character in a variable name must be a letter and MATLAB is case sensitive in the sense that uh, the MATLAB variable names are case sensitive in the sense that upper and lower case are distinguished okay and I give something like a 1 B X equals pi so let's just run this and you can see you have a 1 B X and the variable Y okay so those are MATLAB variables let's look at uh, some other some of the other MATLAB uh, syntaxes I mean syntax rules syntaxes there's no syntaxes so arithmetic expression is the recipe uh, for example it produces a number like we just did, we did pi plus pi over 2 okay so and then what else so we talked about echo and the semicolon and you can use to so what if you want to display a different format for example uh, you can do a format long and then type pi and there you get up to 15 digits of precision okay you can do something like format short e and then if I do pi okay so there is scientific notation all right with a five digit uh, mantis part and the default is format short which is this is MATLAB starts up this is what you get which is five digits okay and then let's see what other types so we talked about number types then you can have strings which is a sequence of characters enclosed uh, by single quotes for example I don't know Eli right so Eli is of type string but if you need a string that includes a single quote, for example, um, Eli, you want a single quote there, then you double quote it, right? Like that, and then there, so that. Uh, let's see, then there are, we talked about comments. You can have more than one statement for line, uh, but first, let's, like, so let's look at fprintf, and for this, I'm gonna show you the help facility, so let's see what fprintf does. fprintf writes formatted data to a text file. Well, I'm not going to write it to a file. Uh, let's try printf. Okay, I think it was sprintf. Yeah, write formatted data to a string. So let's look at some examples here. So sprintf um, percent s hello uh, 2 plus 3. Okay, oops. Uh, So you can do, oh, yeah, it's got to be separated by a comma. Oh, oh, I can't spell. Okay. So let's try that. Yeah, oops. What am I doing? There, that's what I was looking for. So it's good I'm making these errors. So the first error I did was I forgot the comma over here, which I put over here. So you can have multiple statements per line, 
okay and notice that uh, oh let's talk about that shortly but before let me after a second error i misspelled this printf but now notice what happened okay so i had two matlab statements per line and i hadn't have not specified where the output of these expressions go to that is to which variable so in the first case when i did s printf percent as hello the output went to ants but then the moment the second statement executed that output also went to ants so my ants variable finally contains the value 5 and this makes sense because matlab is a sequential programming paradigm statements are executed in sequence okay uh, so this is multiple statements per line you can also use uh, ellipses uh, to extend a statement onto the next line for example let's say you want to find the perturbation in the surface area of a sphere okay you can do something like so the surface area of a sphere is 4 pi r squared okay but let's say i want to look at the change in surface area when i change the radius by a value dr so that's the expression but first let me do something that is i'm gonna select this oops what the heck happened how did this pop up no i don't need that there cut that so make all radius is five uh perturbation as i don't know point oh one okay and now i paste this i get that some delta but then what i can do is i can do something like this sort of continuing on the next line i can use three ellipses okay so like that press enter I can do times r plus dr squared minus 4 times pi times r squared. Press enter and I get the same result. Okay, That's another MATLAB syntax. Okay, again, I'm just going through the main, I mean, not the main, the primary syntax that we'll use. Please don't be afraid to explore and let's see clc clears the command window a typical thing to do prior to displaying results like that and the command clear okay all clears all your workspace variables uh let's see how do you solicit keyboard input something like uh for getting the radius you can do you can use the command input enter radius in meter five then you can see you have a workspace variable named r with the value five so we looked at print f or string print f you can also use the function disp hello world okay classic and i don't know if there are escape sequences no there isn't any okay in disp what you can use is just a string right but you can use uh, s printf okay let's do this s printf uh so let's print again so yes you can use escape characters for example uh horizontal tab right uh etc so let's do s printf percent s hello just for the hello for the kick of it world okay. uh, there I forgot my basic programming skills but there it is so using the tab character okay and we can use f print f uh but it writes okay so that's what so you use fprintf primarily to write formatted editor text file but without the fid the file identification which we won't use for now formats data and displays the results on the screen so you can also use fprintf <coughs> so i've shown you sprintf excuse me you can use s i have shown you sprintf you can use fprintf um and experiment with it okay. so remember i was 
talking about this is what my subconscious was thinking about. Uh, how do you, so we have pi, how do you display e? So you can use the exp function, but if you do exp of one, okay, so there's e, or an approximate. Let's see, what about trigonometric functions? Uh, so obviously the inverse of the expo uh, exponential function is log, right? So is the natural logarithm, right? So log of exp of one is obviously one, okay? If you want to do, I believe log 10, log base 10, okay, yep, there it is. If for other logarithms, you can use the change of base rule, right? Uh, for trigonometric functions, let's look at that. So we can use sine, but notice that sine is a sine of the elements of x, so the argument should be in radians. So there. <coughs> so if you type sine of 90, argument is in radians. Okay, so that's obviously you won't get the right answer. You won't get the answer you think you're going to get. Okay. Uh, so there it is in the sense that's all for uh, today's lecture in terms of MATLAB syntax. In the next lecture, what we will work on, I mean, again, this is for your, <coughs> I should not have said week one lecture two, this is actually for your lab. But anyway, for the final lecture of this week, we'll look at conditionals, that is, if-then-else statements and logical operators. All right, see you then.